a perfect sea that nobody can use but the sea turtles. We have the world's largest sea turtle nesting right here at Kennedy Space Center. Just an awesome, awesome thing. Between May and October, we're pretty quiet out here, so we do not disturb anybody. If we, oh, they all went to Macy's shop, and I know where they're at. Okay. <laughs> All right. Up above us, 250 miles into space. It's the International Space Station. It goes around the Earth every 90 minutes. That's a lot of sunrise and sunset, I'll tell you. But there are six astronaut scientists up there right now. They stay for six months at a time. And we've had astronauts in space for over 15 years, believe it or not. But they're up there learning how to do all kinds of things without gravity, and that's very, very difficult. They're learning how to make water, how to grow vegetables, and mostly how to take care of their bodies. Their bodies lose bone density and muscle power while they are in space, so when they come back to Earth and gravity, they are in pain. It takes them a couple of days to acclimate themselves to get ready to walk around down here on Earth again. Scott Kelly, the astronaut, went up to the International Space Station and stayed for one whole year just to see what happened to his body. He's back, he's doing fine, and I don't know what the experts found, but he's doing good. That's all that matters. Up here in front of us is our future. This is where we're going tomorrow. Uh, this is launch pad 39B. It used to look like 39A, but we tore it all down, hauled it all away, and now we have what you call a clean pad. Anybody can launch from this launch platform. If you have a mobile launching platform, a mobile launching tower, and a rocket, you can launch from here. I don't know what it costs you, but you can. There's three lightning stacks that are over 600 feet tall. And there's a niche cable in between them to help deflect all the rockets, the lightning to the ground. If we're real lucky, the rockets will only send a couple of days, and we have we'll have nothing but pure sunshine while they're out here. That would be good. But way, way, way back before they tore down Launch Pad 39B, John Glenn, at the age of 77, launched from this launch platform and went to the International Space Station and stayed for two weeks. He is the oldest man astronaut into space and he is the last of the Mercury 7, if you remember them. He launched in the 60s from the launch pad 39A. He went around the moon, he never landed. All the moonwalkers launched from launch pad 39A. It is a national monument now, but John Glenn now is 95 years old and he's just doing fine. He was here a few months ago and we were just tickled pink to see him, I'll tell you. All right, coming up here on the right is some more water. Mostly what you will see is weeds and brush from the bottom of the water. It is so low. Whether there's any alligators or not, we'll have to really look because it's hard to tell. Well, I don't see anything looks like an alligator to me. All right, well, let's try the creek here or the uh, canal, see if there's anything in there. Nope, I didn't see anything. All the people that work out here have to check under their vehicles before they leave because they go in between the flame trench and the orbiter. They help deflect all the flames from the water down through the flame trench. They are four inches of solid concrete, and this is what happens to them in the heat. They melt. That's really hot heat to melt concrete, I'll tell you. We don't know what they're going to do with them. They're just sitting here, so we talk about them. <laughs> don't sit still. We'll talk about them to me. Look at the top of Orange Pad 39B, that tall skinny tower, is actually an elevator. This is how the astronauts are going to get into the rockets when we start launching from here again. And over here on our right, this is Crawlerway B. It is four miles long. The other one, remember, was three and a half miles. And over on the left is Launch Pad 39A. It is one mile away. Everything out here is designed for safety. If it isn't safe, it doesn't happen. That's all there is to it. We're going to watch a video telling you more about what's going on out here at Launch Pad 39B. So enjoy. Preparation for the future is obvious. As at Launch Pad 39B. Built as an identical pad to 39A for the Apollo Saturn V rocket, pad 
5B was also updated for the Space Shuttle program. 53 shuttle missions launched from this pad, including 12 missions to help construct or resupply the space station. Today, the pad is being modified for the Space Launch System, or SLX. It will be used for NASA's deep space missions beyond Earth orbit, including the capture of an asteroid and, eventually, human exploration of Mars. Three 600-foot-tall masts were built near the pad to provide lightning protection to the vehicles prior to launch. Both the fixed service structure and rotating service structure that were built for the shuttle have been removed, making it more flexible and able to support many different launch vehicles. Below the pad is a four-story facility that houses the infrastructure needed for launch, including power, hydraulics, and water. Several miles of outdated wiring and cables have been removed and replaced with high-speed fiber optics. The first SLS mission carrying a crew aboard the Orion spacecraft is set to launch on a three-week trip to orbit the moon to demonstrate the capabilities necessary for NASA to conduct an asteroid retrieval mission. SLS vehicles will evolve to support human deep space missions, in addition to robotic missions and astronomical observatories. In the past, such missions have been limited by the size and capabilities of existing rockets. The SLS payload carrier is large enough to hold nine school buses. And for NASA's missions to the outer planets, its larger propulsion systems would enable more direct trajectories, reducing mission travel time and increasing actual mission time by years. Previous spacecraft have had to make multiple gravity assist maneuvers around the inner planets to reach the velocity needed, costing valuable time. Sweet and so respect. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the crawler wave. I cannot stop, but I can go really slow. You can get pictures. This is the once in a lifetime happening view because you'll never see this anywhere else in the world. We're the only ones who have it. And that might not be long, who knows? Out here every day something changes.
SpaceX is also building a crew capsule miles capable of carrying astronauts and will be launching oh, nice. crews to the International Space Station as part of NASA's commercial crew program. Like Another commercial provider to support NASA's crew transportation is Boeing. They named their capsule the CST-100. Like SpaceX, Boeing's capsule will begin flying to the station later this decade. They will launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station just a few miles from here on a modified Atlas V rocket. With private industry stepping up to support low Earth orbit missions to the ISS, NASA can focus more heavily on deep space exploration, which you will learn about at Launchpad 39B. All right, ladies and gentlemen, out my front window is the Vehicle Assembly Building. It is the world's largest one-story building. It is 525 feet tall. It sits on eight acres of land, and you can get the, the doors, two on this side and two on the opposite side, are the world's tallest doors. They are 456 feet tall, and they will take 45 minutes to open all the way up. This building was designed for the Apollo Saturn V rocket that you're going to see at the end of your tour. And when that rocket came through those doors, it only had six feet to spare. That's how big it is. Over on our left, the flag flying on the flagpole. At the bottom of that flagpole is a little blue box. And that blue box is the countdown clock. Most important clock in the world on the day of launch. Everybody watches it. The buildings on the left are the press boxes. And this is where they will monitor the launch. So you can watch it at home on your TV. Over on the right, the United States flag on the side of the building is 209 foot tall, 110 foot wide. Each stripe is eight foot wide, large enough for this bus to drive on it. And each star is six foot wide, point to point. It is one big flag and we're mighty proud of her. All right, they got the doors open on the building. I want you to look all the way through. You can see the other half of the building, the other side of the building, I'll put it that way. If you stand right there in the middle of that room you're looking through, you can look straight up 525 feet and break your neck. It is one awesome sight, I'll tell you. Isn't that cool? All right, up here on the right, this white box with a railing out front. This is one of the original walkways. The astronauts walked across from the platform into the orbiter. The white box was called the white room, if you remember. This uh, rocket is the uh, escape route for the Orion astronauts. If anything would happen, they would get away in a hurry in that. And this green tank was the escape route for the orbiter astronauts. All seven of them would get in there if anything had, had happened. Luckily, in 50 years, we never, ever had to use them. Let's hope another 50 years go by before we do. All right, over here on the right, this white building with the blue canopy, that's the most important building out here. All the big decisions are made in there. Anybody know what it is? How about the lunchroom, the cafeteria? <laughs> it's really hard, big decision. All right, we're gonna watch another video while we travel along here, so enjoy. We explore to gain knowledge, to push the boundary, to feel the unknown. We seek to discover, find answers here on Earth and in space. Was Mars once an Earth like planet, in water, and an atmosphere? What happened? Can the same thing happen here on Earth? What about asteroids? Is there something we can do to prevent a big one from colliding with Earth? We can go to Mars in our lifetime and answer some of humanity's fundamental questions about life beyond Earth. Robots are doing great work exploring our solar system, but eventually, we want to be able to put a person on the ground. Now, sending people to deep space destinations requires a lot of stuff. Including water, shelter, fuel, spare parts, tools, and supplies. It's like a space ferry on a beach. The farther you go and the longer the trip, the more you need, and that means moving a lot of mass. So when you talk about getting past the pull of Earth's gravity, you need a bigger, more powerful rocket. Coming up here on the right. if we're lucky, we'll get to see an alligator 
or some manatees. They are just their noses come up the manatees that for them to breathe. And that's them breathing, coming up to breathe. If you see it, I don't see an alligator. Yeah, they don't wow. think of us. Dog on it. Well, on your way back to the visitor center, check on the other side. You might get lucky. The larger evolved version of this OS can carry a habitat, larger solar array, additional propulsion, you name it. It's really a personal project. Yeah, it was. astronauts beyond lower orbit, we need a new crew vehicle, Orion. The Orion spacecraft is a conical shape, like Apollo was. But it's actually larger than Apollo, and is capable of taking people farther into space than ever before. It can protect the crew of four for up to 21 days, and carry food, air, water, supplies, and all the things the crew will need. Orion is the most advanced and versatile spacecraft ever made. It uses state-of-the-art technology, materials, and design processes based on more than 50 years of research and technology development. The first crewed flight of Orion and the Space Launch System will be a flight around the moon during Exploration Mission 2. A crew of astronauts will launch on SLS, fly several orbits around the Earth, then perform a translunar injection, which will send them on a path from Earth orbit towards the moon. Once the crew gets near the moon, Orion will pass within 60 miles of the surface, and from there, Orion can enter into a high lunar orbit, several thousand miles from the surface. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming in to the vehicle or into the Apollo Saturn V rocket museum. When you get off the bus, you're going to go through the big steel doors, watch a movie for a few minutes, then you're going to go into the next room, watch a mock-up of a real-life launch, then you're going to go in the launch plaza and see the real-life Apollo Saturn V rocket. It is one awesome sight. Check around, make sure you have all your personal belongings, please, because you will be on a different bus the next part of your tour. And I thank you for riding with me today. I hope you enjoyed your tour, and you have a fun, fun day. Thank you.